بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The deception of the truth is when we yaw it we don't accept it readily and we start having animosity and hatred for the speaker So the more the person has ikhlas, sincerity he's ready to accept and change and the more a person is proud, arrogant, and thinks so they are there, they will object, rebel, retaliate, and even take steps to harm the speaker. So Sahaba Umar an looked forward to people who would come to them and bring notice to their faults. So yes, nobody is perfect. But a person can be perfect when they perfect their intention. So if a person, as long as you are a seeker of truth, you will progress. And we can have an excuse in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. Imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to treat us how we treat people. Someone says one thing wrong, and we don't speak to them our entire life. That wrong thing was something about us, it was notifying us, it was for our own benefit. So nowadays, even to notify somebody of something which is going to harm them in their own interest, you have to use so much wisdom and you cannot be direct and you cannot be open to such an extent that between a husband and wife they don't have an open relationship where they can confide in each other about each other's flaws. Likewise, so that's a, a downfall and a cause for talaq, a divorce. Likewise, in a business relationship, the one partner is doing this and that, but the other partner cannot speak to him because he knows if I tell him, it's a serious problem, the consequences are even more drastic and dramatic. So like that we face many challenges. So you can't even tell a person wrong, if somebody does wrong, you're ready to take revenge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seen, we are speaking evil, we are doing evil, we are doing wrong, that's the people of Iman. Then the kuffar, the wrong that they are doing, and the shirk, Allah is witnessing that. Then the amount of wars, killing, zina, gambling, different types of ma'asi, disobedience are taking place. But Allah does not treat us how we treat each other. So it's a very important point to note. Ta we need to imbibe the character of Allah. How Allah treats His creation, whether He is Ghaffar, Allah is forgiving. Whether Allah is Rahim, He is merciful. Whether Allah is Sattar, Allah conceals people's faults. Today people thrive on exposing other people's faults. Forget others, even our loved ones, our close ones, we expose and bring it and make it public. So we need to imbibe the akhlaq, the character, the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereas all this discord and disruption on earth, لَوْ يُعَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِظُلْمِهِمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to take men to task for the wrongs that he's doing, ما ترك على ظهر الأرض ما ترك عليها من دابة. Allah subhanahu wa taala would have not left a single creature on earth alive. لو يأخذ الله الناس بظلمهم ما ترك عليها من دابة. Not a single creature would have survived. Somebody was in the company of Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu an, 
and he said in front of Abu Huraira radiallahu an, inna al-zalima la yadurru illa nafsa. That an oppressor, his oppression only harms himself. When he heard this, Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he said, ba'sa ma qulta, ba'sa ma qulta. You said something very terrible. This is completely wrong. In hubara tamutu fi wakriha bidhulm al-zalim. Even the birds in their nest, in their habitat, in their environment, die, are harmed, face the consequences of the sinner, the disobedient. So our actions have a direct impact on other human beings as well as the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Abdullah ibn Masood used to say, إن الجعل لا تعذف في جحرها بذنب ابن آدم that even the beetles, the insects, the ants, the creatures that are in their holes are punished because of the sins of Ibn Adam, this human being. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Kareem, is Rahim, is all forgiving, is all merciful. But for the benefit of this insan, Ulama explain Allah sends conditions so that لَعَلَّهُمْ يرجعون. So they can take lesson, they can realize what is the objective and which direction they've been going is completely wrong. That's why Mutrif Ibn Abdullah used to say لا تنظر إلا خفض عيش الملوك Don't look at the comfort and the luxury and the enjoyment of the kings. You look at the rich people and you think they sat and you want to follow their way of life. وَلِينِ رِيَاشِهِمْ And the softness and the comfort of their homes, the comfort of their mattresses, the comfort and the luxuries they enjoy. He said, don't become deceived. You need to look at their lives. وَلَكِنْ انْذُرُوا إِلَى سُرْعَةِ ضَعْنِهِمْ وَسُوءِ مُنْقَلَبِهِمْ Then rather look at their swift departure from this dunya. They're not going to enjoy those luxuries forever. And look at the final destiny the evil consequences of their actions and how it will catch up with them. So we need to be aware and cognizant that we don't get caught in this doka and deception. Others are not an example. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam in Saba were examples. They set a standard. They are our targets. As Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu may say, Inna Allah ja'ala dunya thalatha ajza. Allah has divided this world into three categories of people. Juz'an lil mu'min wa juz'an lil munafiq wa juz'an lil kafir. Wa a mu'min, a munafiq and a kafir. Fal mu'min yatazawwad. A believer abstains is very scrupulous, is very, very particular about his life, his time, his energy, where he utilizes it, and he prepares for the provisions for the final destination. يتزين, and a hypocrite worries about the beautification of dunya, the embellishment of dunya. And a kafir is worried about enjoyment, recreation, gratification, taking pleasure from the dunya. So a mu'min's priority is different from a kafir and a munafiq. We have been given other objectives and our destination is different. That's why the mashaykh used to say with regards to dunya, a dunya jifatun wa tullabuha kilabun. This world is a decaying, decomposing corpse. And the seekers 
of the scorps, uh, the dogs. So if a person has vision of Akhirat, then he will be blind of dunya. Any person who has vision of dunya will be blind of Akhirah. A person must decide. He wants dunya or he wants Akhirat. Some Mashaykh have said we we seen probably in a dream Ra'aytu dunya fi suratin jifa I seen the dunya in a form of a dead corpse or Ra'aytu iblis fi surati kalbin in the form of a dog and he was enchanted and captivated on dunya wa munadi an yunadi and he was screaming and proclaiming anta kalbum min kilabi wa adhi jifatum min khalqi that you are a dog from amongst my dogs, addressing the humans. And this is my dead corpse which I have created. And I have kept for you your share. And when you make this your priority and your focus, I will make you the slave of this dead corpse like how an animal is avarice of its provisions and its morning and evening is only striving for its sustenance your day and night your hours minutes and seconds will be dedicated to acquiring dunya as the shair says ya khatib dunya ila nafsiha tanaha an khitbatiha taslam Oh, that person who has proposed to dunya, change your direction, cancel the engagement, cancel the engagement, you will be protected. Because the one who you have proposed to, this bride is very deceiving. And this bride will one day be a means of a funeral, means it's going to be your destruction and your end. So be very careful of this dunya. If you've decided to marry dunya, then remember that will be your downfall. So a person who's not ready to accept the truth, when he's told the truth, he avoids it, he finds healers, he finds excuses when he's told the Masla, he tries to avoid it. Find the right Mufti to give him the appropriate fatwa that suits him. So there was a story of a person who went to the doctor and he told the doctor, I've got a serious problem. What's the problem? He said, I cannot do work that I used to do in the house. I'm very active. I used to be in the garden, in the house, washing the car. I don't have any energy for any chores. So the doctor said, okay, let's do all the tests. So the doctor did all the examination, finished it and got the results in front of him. So this person said, doc, you know what? You can be frank with me. Just tell me the truth. You don't need to hide anything from me. I'm ready to accept. So what's wrong with me? So the doctor said, let me tell you in simple language in, in English. The problem is you are lazy. The problem is you are lazy. So he said, agree doc, I just need a medical term so I can tell my wife because all the tests that I've done, now I need to go back and justify my wife. I need a medical term so I can carry on being lazy. I can carry on being lazy. So in Dean we find excuses to avoid Dean. Sahaba found reasons to increase on deen. They found so much reason that Quran and Hadith were revealed to decrease the fikr, to decrease amal. We, we need Quran and Hadith to give us sarib to increase, yet we can't increase. So there's a big difference. And deen needs sacrifice, like Sahaba for deen to spread, for hidayah to come into the world. Sahaba watered the garden of Islam with their blood. We cannot even water the garden of Islam with our tears. So sacrifice. They say a person was storing 
the countryside when he came across a farmer sitting on a tree stump and he was just chewing a blade of grass. So he asked him how things. So the farmer said, no complaints. I had some trees cut down. A cyclone came al along. I had to cut the trees. The cyclone came and spared me the trouble. So they say it's an ill wind, but for me it wasn't something bad because the cyclone did me a favor. So, so you find any other issues? He said, no, 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 no. But I needed to set fire the pile and a, s a strike of lightning, a storm came and set the entire bush on fire and it burnt it. So he said, another stroke of luck. So the Torahs asked him, and what are you going to do next? So he said, uh, nothing much. I'm just waiting for an earthquake to come along and shake the potatoes out of the ground. I'm waiting for an earthquake to come along and shake the potatoes out of the ground. So Allah has made it so easy in today's Zamana Saba to travel on horseback, take provisions for months with the scorching heat, no shell ultras, no air conditioner vehicles, all the amenities which Allah has given us, yet we complain and struggle to practice on deen. There's a farmer who had a lot of employees on his farm and it was known they were lazy. So one morning he decided, okay, let's put them to the test and uh, assess their laziness. So he called them all together and he said, gentlemen, I have a nice and easy job today for the laziest on the farm. Will the laziest of you step forward? So immediately from the ten, nine stepped forward. So the farmer now was shocked. One man was left behind. So he asked him, why didn't you step forward with the rest of everyone? Why didn't you step forward with everyone else? So he smiled and he said, boss, too much trouble, too much trouble. So we make excuses, we find reasons to avoid Salat with Jamaat, we find reasons to avoid going out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this deception of hearing the truth and loving in the world of lies has become common. You see the world's biggest lies amongst them are, somebody says the check is in the mail, somebody else says I did the payment this morning. Somebody else says, I'll send you the proof of payment. Somebody is driving, he says, Officer, was I driving fast? Was I driving fast? The doctor says, this won't hurt. This won't hurt. Somebody else says, you can tell me the truth, come on. I promise I won't get angry. Parent says, I won't get angry. Eat this. You like it. It does, you like it. Somebody else says it's only the previous owner of this car who was a little old lady and she didn't do much mileage. Somebody else says my wife doesn't understand me. Somebody else says you don't look a day over 40. Somebody else says don't worry about it boss. We'll do the work first thing tomorrow morning. Someone else says we've had a lot of interest in this property, when the estate agent is selling it, the wife or husband says, of course I love you. Somebody else says, you don't need it in writing, you have my word, you have my word. Someone else says, I'll call you later, it never happens. The salesman says, it's an absolute bargain. The seller says, the villa is just 100 meters from the beach. When you're late, I'll be there in five minutes, five minutes, I'm five minutes away. On holiday, having a great time, wish you were here. You made it yourself, I would have never guessed. If it will make you happy, it will make me happy. Husband says, or the beloved, when selling something, it's supposed to make that noise, it's normal. Salesman, one size fits all. 
You're lucky. This is the last one in stock. Oh, it's not the money. It's the principle of things. Our children have never caused us a moment of worry. It's a very small spot. Nobody will notice it. The color really suits you. The husband tells the wife, the color really suits you. She means nothing to me. When he gets caught, no, she means nothing to me. That's just a message. Trust me. Salesman, you won't find anything cheaper. Or all our work is guaranteed. Try getting all of them. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I never argue with a lady. Always arguing. Don't worry, I'm on your side. Don't worry, I can go another 20 kilometers with this empty gauge. It's the one that always gets stuck. I know how to get there. I know how to get there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillah. Hi rabbil alameen.